Hey guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope you're all having a great day. And if not, I hope your day gets better after this. Please don't forget to hit the bell for notifications and leave a comment. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. It helps my channel a lot. Okay, so sit back, put your feet up, relax, and let's get on with the story. Okay, so it doesn't uh, actually have a lot of information. It just starts out in the month of July 1998. My friend Jesse and I went on a hiking trip at Rattlesnake Ridge to collect rocks for Jesse's geology class at Seattle University. We reached the gravel parking lot about 1 o'clock. At the beginning of the trailhead, there's a lake that is very active with waterfowl and occasionally birds of prey. Normally, this trailhead is semi-popular and we noticed that there were only three other cars in the lot at the time. Looking back now, I can say that this particular day was odd in that we noticed no animal or bird activity, which normally is abundant around the lake at this trailhead. Everything seemed strangely quiet and an ominous feeling seemed to loom everywhere. In fact, Normally, both Jesse and myself are quite talkative when we hike, and even said very little to one another. Both of us had packed lunch in our backpacks, along with our usual flashlight, waterproof matches, extra batteries, two walkie-talkies, a cell phone, and a first aid kit. So, we started our hike on the regular trailhead until we reached the opposite side of the lake. At this point, we exited the regular trail and began ascending up the mountain, moving diagonally towards the rock face of the mountain ridge. After approximately 20 minutes, we came upon a small creek that flowed downhill towards the lake. We decided to follow the creek upwards, as it seemed to be going in the direction of our destination. We followed the stream for approximately another 15 minutes or so, until we ran across an animal trail that was also going in the direction that we were heading. However, the animal trail was moving diagonally and had fewer obstructions in our path, both of which made it easier to move up the mountain. Other than our own heavy breathing, we could hear nothing, and we said nothing as we continued our ascent. We continued on for what seemed like oh, only 10 minutes, when we began to hear a loud slurping sound ahead of us. We both looked at one another with a what the hell type of expression on our faces while continuing upward. The slurping grew louder and now we could hear what sounded like a sigh in between each slurp. At this junction, the creek hooked around behind a hill in front of us and then out of sight. Our trail would intersect with the creek once again just over this hill. At this time in the hike, Jesse was ahead of me by about eight to ten feet. Suddenly, as we came over the hill, Jesse froze in his steps, and I came up behind him, alerted by his actions. As I approached him from his six, I looked over his shoulder and also saw what he was looking at. In front of us, and only twenty feet from our position, I saw what at first I thought was a huge bear drinking from the creek. As my brain tried to categorize the animal I was looking at, I suddenly realized that directly under the glutes were a pair of huge feet. Not hooves or paws, but actual feet, each having five toes. The feet were a dusty gray color with the same texture of the bottom of a dog's paw. As it knelt down, the glutes were as large as any Clydesdale's ass. And I'm not kidding. With the exception of the soles of its feet, this creature was covered in four to five inches in dark brown, almost black hair. Its hair on its butt was all matted, and it looked like he had sat in a wet cow pie. Under its butt, I could see testicles, and I knew it was a male. We stood there frozen with fear. I could not feel my legs and my skin crawled from the adrenaline running through my blood. I remember my mouth going dry and feeling numb all over my 
mouth and face. The smell of this animal was indescribable. It was absolutely horrible, and I could feel my gag reflexes twitching as I badly wanted to vomit. Jesse's face was beet red and his eyes were watering as his hand was over his mouth, also trying to hold back the noxious feeling we had. He then tried to back up, pushing me back also. We both tried to regain our balance while still keeping our eyes on this thing. It must have heard us moving because suddenly, in one quick motion, it jumped to its feet and spun around facing us in a defensive posture. As it did this, it made a loud bark-type sound that seemed to make the trees shake. It stood there with its fists clenched and its arms raised in front like a boxer. Its lips were curled, bearing these huge horse teeth as it glared directly at us and breathed heavily. The bottom half of its face was dripping with creek water and his eyes were black like a shark's eyes. I stood there frozen out of fear and amazement of the animal's sheer size and agility. I am 6'2 and I only came to its midsection. I can only guess that this animal was between 10 and 12 feet in height. It was much higher than a basketball rim and towered over us like we were children. I remember briefly thinking of grabbing my weapon, but even if I was able to empty my whole clip into him, he was still close enough to have been able to get us before he was neutralized. Therefore, all three of us just stood there for a good minute and 20 seconds or so and studied each other. I was absolutely in amazement at the incredible size of this creature. I remember every detail clearly as if it was yesterday, and I'll attempt to describe the proportions of this creature the way I seen it. First of all, the feet on this creature were massive and were approximately 20 or more inches in length. The toenails and fingernails were dark colored with an orange tint to them. The creature did not have an ounce of fat on its entire body, and I could see the vascularity of every muscle that seemed like they would have been striated if it weren't for the hair that covered them. The calves were twice the size of my own head, and his quads were as big as three tree trunks and swept out like a bodybuilder's. I'm not kidding. Those legs looked like the guy could squat a full-size Dodge pickup truck. The glutes were huge and muscular and very high, like a track runner's. They tied into these enormous hamstrings that gave the animal a very explosive look, like it could sprint at a very high speed. The waist was narrow and very powerful and solid-looking. Above that, I could see these huge lats that flared out under its arms, his pectorals were wide and bulky looking. They were so big that they came up to his chin. I couldn't see any neck at all, but his traps and deltoids were what really caught my attention. First of all, the delts were as big as a beach ball, and connected to them were these huge traps that flared out and upward. They went from his deltoids to his ears. The top of his head was conical and these bulky muscles streamed down from the tip of his cranium to his traps, kind of like the back of a gorilla's neck. Now, the face was not like an ape at all. It really looked like a Neanderthal in the facial features. The face had less hair than the rest of its body, all except for these thick eyebrows that pointed upwards. He had no hair around his eyes or on his nose. Forehead was sloped and the eyebrow ridges protruded out and under them were these deep eye sockets that sank deep into its skull. The cheekbones were very wide and high and below them was this deep, powerful looking jawline. The nose had a ridge to it, like a human nose, and the nostrils flared out and forward. They weren't pointed down like the human nostrils would be. When his lips relaxed a bit, I could see that he really didn't have an upper lip at all. It was very thin and his bottom lip was larger. The mouth overall was very wide, as was his face. His arms were huge and bulky 
and you could see his triceps bulging out and his biceps looked like bowling balls. His forearms were abnormally long and they too were bulging with muscles. His knuckles were huge and the color of his skin was a cross between black and gray. Believe me, trying to describe this creature does not even begin to do it justice. I wish I could somehow download his picture from my brain and put it on a screen to show you his enormous proportions. In 1993, I shot a 1,200-pound bull elk near Yakima. The creature we saw that day had twice the muscle mass as my elk did. And I guarantee you, he weighed no less than 1,500 pounds, with a maximum weight of 2,500 pounds easily. Finally, we had enough, and the urge to leave grew very strong. We began backing down the trail, keeping our eyes glued on the creature the entire time, except to look where we were going periodically. As we backed away, his arms dropped to his sides, and he opened his mouth and let out a soft and deep bellow sound, kind of like the gurgling moan sound that a male lion makes to declare his territory. Long after he was out of sight, we could hear this bellowing as we began a rapid descent down the mountain. When we reached the opening at the bottom near the lake, we opened up into a full sprint all the way to the car. We drove all the way to Bellevue, Washington, before we stopped for coffee to try and collect our thoughts. And that's the end of that story. There's no signature. Um, wow. I don't think I've ever heard a more detailed description as I did with this story. You know, I'm almost tempted to offer to have, a, you know, like a sketch artist try to sketch it from his description. That would be so cool. I would love to see the, the end result. Anyways, guys, uh, we're going to call it, call it a day there, I guess. Uh, if you've got an encounter, please send it in. I've added the email address periodically through the video, and it's in the description box. And I think it can even be found in the About section on the homepage, where the community page can be reached and all of that. Okay, guys, you know I love ya. Take care, have a great day, and we'll see you back here, eh, probably a day or two. Bye for now.